today we're gonna be talking facts. We are gonna be speaking the truth. We are going to be delving into problems and we are going to see how it actually works in practice. Now you're possibly asking the question, but Marco, what are we talking about today? Well, I'm super excited today because we are going to be talking about matching tubes. Tubes, where to buy them, what to buy, what to spend money on, what not to spend money on, demystifying a lot of stuff and basically giving you a lot of really valuable information which is going to keep you happy at least till the end of this particular day. So I encourage you to spend the next few minutes with me, a slightly arrogant, slightly technical blonde guy who is going to be talking all kinds of different things about amplifiers and tubes and how to keep your amplifier crushing and healthy and great and all that good stuff. But you know what else is good? This is good. My shroom cup, it's here, it's filled up and I encourage you to go get a beverage and delve into this topic with me now. Let's go. Now I think it's very important to say in the beginning that what I do on this channel is mainly guitar related stuff, but there is another world. A world which is the only world that is worse than the guitar player world and it's the hi-fi world of course. Now in the hi-fi world they also use audio stuff and obviously they would have audio amplifiers as well as we do in the guitar world but that stuff is actually different. These amps are different, architectures are different but the problem is some ridiculous myths or maybe some ridiculously true things overlap in these worlds and some of the stuff comes from hi-fi into the guitar world which doesn't exactly make sense in the guitar world and I think that is the main reason why there are some of these misconceptions regarding the tubes. Now before we delve balls deep into this topic I need to say something which might be a little bit stupid for some people who know this stuff but trust me there are a lot of people who don't know this. When it comes to matched tubes you first need to figure out whether you actually need a set of matched tubes. Why? Because there are a lot of different architectures and certain architectures of amplifiers do not require tube matching and this is something that you should know. You should just consult someone who actually knows it or you can read the fucking manual. But let's just say that 95% of guitar amplifiers that we usually use actually need matched tubes. And in this video we are mostly going to be talking about power tubes and matching power tubes but I will definitely mention balanced triodes and matching small tubes as well sometime later in the video. Now an extremely important thing to understand because there are a lot of guitar channels who talk about tubes and stuff like that and they're mostly made by people who actually play guitar and they recognize tubes as part of a certain circuit so they kind of connected the the tube to a certain sound which is absolutely fine that's how we talk about stuff in the guitar world but from that what I said now it's very important to understand that a tube functions as a part of a circuit and that is extremely important for this matching talk. Now the fact that the tube functions as a part of a circuit means that this tube will actually function completely differently in different circuits. It is just one part of the circuit. So I'll say immediately, I don't really believe that there is a KT77 sound, there is a KT77 sound in a Marshall or a KT77 sound in a diesel, not a KT77 sound. Now if somebody is asking like why do we actually need matched tubes? Well matched tubes function in different circuits. Usually we use them in our push-pull amplifiers. Most of our amplifiers are push-pull and basically to simplify it completely the way how that works is that somebody was extremely smart back in the day and what they figured out is that imagine when the sine wave is going into the plus region then let's say one tube or the left tube is going to be doing its work and when the sine wave is going to the minus region then the other tube is going to take over the work and they are sort of helping each other pushing and pulling and as a result you are going to achieve many things maybe the most important of all would be the 
you will increase the efficiency of the amplifier. Therefore, you're gonna get a lot more wattage, but there are obviously a lot of different things that happen in push-pull amplifiers, and I'm absolutely sure that somebody is going to write an essay in the comments telling us all about it. So the general idea is that for a lot of these different tube amplifiers and architectures of amplifiers, the tubes need to be matched so they do an equal job, because mismatching is going to do a lot of weird things, and we are going to be talking about exactly that very soon. Now, but first of all, I want to talk about this whole matching thing, because in practice how it works is that we need a new set of tubes for our amplifier, and what we do, we go to a website, and over there they offer us their matching procedure. So you can buy, let's say, one EL34, but you can buy a pair of EL34s, or a quartet, or a sextet, and you can also just pay an additional small fee, they're gonna match these tubes. What does that actually mean? Now what is important here to understand is that different companies do different matching procedures, but what most companies actually do is they match only one parameter in the tube. And that parameter is the plate current. Now the tube is a rather sophisticated device and it has all kinds of different parameters and most companies only match one of the parameters. That actually doesn't mean that this tube is going to be matched to this tube even though this is a KD77. Does it? Let's imagine these two tubes are of the exact same type, if we match only the plate current on these tubes, that actually doesn't mean that this tube is going to be um, matched. Basically, there are a lot of different parameters that can also possibly be matched, but it's actually a lot of work. Now, I have to say here, because some people already started typing in the comments, different companies do different types of matching. For example, if you take this KT77, which I bought at Tubeamp Doctor, I hope that you can see this, but they actually have a certain label over here, which says current, that would be the plate current, and they also match for transconductance, which is absolutely great. So they have an additional parameter that they are matching against against the other tubes, so you are getting a more better match between tubes. Now naturally there are other different parameters that can be potentially matched, but let me tell you something, in practice it is extremely hard to find two tubes that are completely matched, so those companies, they don't actually do these things. Usually the companies are going to match the current, some companies are also going to match the transconductance, and usually they have this stuff written on their website, so check that out. The more matching they do, the better for you. And if you remember, there are some older tubes that have the color coding thing. Basically, the color coding thing was different from company to company. According to the color, you could practically know that this is either like a very hot tube, draws a lot of current, or it's a colder tube, or it's a tube specially selected for a certain application. And you can also read that somewhere in the data sheets of that particular company. But what is very important now to understand, just a moment ago, I actually said that tubes function as a part of a system and that is extremely important now because if you take an EL34 for example this is a tube and it has certain characteristics. If you put it in a Marshall circuit, it is going to do one thing. If you put it in a high watt circuit, it's going to do another thing. If you put it in some kind of third circuit, which has different characteristics, it is going to behave differently. When they match the tubes, they put it in their own circuit. There are certain devices that they use, they put it and they apply certain voltages, some numbers that they select and some numbers that are actually standardized possibly in the industry and they match the tubes in that environment. The problem is tubes are rather complex and when you change the environment for them that will actually reveal the other differences between the tubes. So what actually happens in practice, and I'm telling you this from experience, after changing hundreds and hundreds of tubes and amplifiers is that when I get matched tubes and I put them in certain circuits, they don't actually um, match. But as I said, in practice, to find two tubes that are matched, you know, it's extremely, extremely hard. 
if not impossible. So what we are doing in practice is we are taking some parameters which are actually important and matching them so we get the tubes to be as close as possible. And also in practice for us guitar players and whoever is changing tubes in their amplifier, we need a little bit of luck to get a set of matched tubes. Which brings us to the next topic and that is the Slightly Technical Academy where you can register for free because there are some free Tonex packs, some tech pages that you can check out, some great courses are coming out and I invite you to become a part of a growing family. One family that is actually growing really fast and I'm amazed. So I thank everybody for joining and for watching my videos and that being said, I'm gonna go back to this lovely topic of ours. All right, so what we know until now is that matching is really not perfect and that you can actually go to different companies. Some companies do a more perfect error matching and I would always advise to going and checking that out. I did mention the hi-fi world and in the hi-fi world, conditions are a little bit different. And to be honest, in the hi-fi world, it is worth investing a little bit more to getting better matched tubes because because of the sound qualities from the amplifiers and whatnot, this let's not delve into the hi-fi thing, but over there, the matching is a little bit more important. One very important thing to mention is that, you know, our output transformers and like 99% of our amplifiers are actually not well balanced. So fully matched tubes, you know, they don't sort of make sense. Where in hi-fi, they have different output transformers and it is worth matching the tubes well in the hi-fi world because you're gonna get less noise, you're gonna get a very well functioning working amplifier that is going to sound better. But in the guitar world that is not really the case. The output transformer is usually not really balanced, especially in the amplifiers that we all know and love. Oh, those amplifiers don't really have balanced transformers and there is always a slight mismatch between tubes. Now I know that most of you have actually heard stories from like bands and texts like hey, you don't need to match them you just put any kind of tube in there you know that concert 87 tube broke whatever we put the new tube over there and it was working for the next 10 years yes that can happen it can absolutely happen not only that mismatched tubes a lot of the times sound Great. And I tell you a story. If you were watching this channel, you remember the Evil 800, the JCM 800 Marshall that I had, and I got the Tone X packs from this amplifier. Basically, I was servicing this amplifier for a long time, and that amplifier a long time ago had a set of Wing C Svetlanas. Actually, this is the tube from that amplifier. I saved it. And they were mismatched. And I told the owner, like, listen, this is mismatched, but the th fact is, that when tubes are mismatched and when one tube is pulling more current than the other, it is sort of working harder than the other and it's wearing out faster than the other. So at some point it is going to fail. And I told him that and obviously it failed when they went to another country to play a gig. And the funny thing is when I put a new set of tubes in Biased and the amplifier sounded great and everything, we kind of realized it actually sounded better before because of the mismatch that was happening. It was adding some harmonics. It was maybe losing a little bit of bass. It was kind of weird what was happening, but the tonal quality could be clearly heard. Now, obviously, with the new set of tubes, the amplifier sounds great, and eventually the ears are going to adapt to this whole thing. It's going to be absolutely fine, but there are great qualities of mismatched tubes. Well, you have to be careful with this because I would never as a professional advise purposely mismatching tubes unless you really know what you're doing. I do it on purpose sometimes, but I'm also aware of the fact that certain problems can arise from this. And before we come to the Marco make your fucking point part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about balanced Tubes. Okay, so you might have seen that companies nowadays offer matching of small tubes like 12AX7s, 12AT7s. First of all, that is not really necessarily needed in guitar amplifiers. I would even advise against it. I think that's a waste of money, but as I said in the hi-fi world, stuff is different, so maybe for your hi-fi equipment you want to match the shit out of everything. But in the case of guitar equipment, just get one 
plug it in and play it. Now balance tubes are a little bit different. So when you have a 12AX7 or a 12AT7, uh, they would have like two triodes inside. So these balanced ones are actually a single tube that has the two triodes being like very similar or like matched to each other. And they are usually advised for the phase inverter stage. Now, it is very important to understand here, there are different architectures of the phase inverter. And actually, most of our phase inverters that we use in the amplifiers that we all know and love are not actually balanced. Of course, there are amplifiers that have like matching trimmers. There are different phase inverter architectures. And sometimes you are going to feel the benefits of the balanced tube. But you know, honestly, in guitar amplifiers, oh God, I just don't think about it. I just get a good tube and I'm fine with that. But if you really feel like doing again a high hi-fi thing in your amplifier, that's absolutely up to you. Try it out in a high watt. So make your fucking point, Marco. Okay, so what's the point? Usually people like me tell them, what should I do? Where should I buy? Well, as you know, on this channel, I'm not affiliated pretty much with anybody, I don't really care. But I can tell you in Europe, I have really good experiences with Tube Amp Doctor. Tube Amp Doctor matches according to uh, current and uh, transconductance. And uh, usually they're extremely fast in shipping. And I absolutely, absolutely love that about them. Now, there are also different companies. I think in the USA, it should be the Tube Store, but I'm sure that somebody in the comments can tell us about their experiences with these certain companies. And maybe we can just use this video as a channel where people can actually get the right information. But basically, I buy my tubes from Tube Amp Doctor. They're really fast at shipping. They do good matching. And basically, I get all my tubes for them at the moment. Now, what tubes to get is a question that I will definitely not answer in this video. Why? Well, people, because tubes are actually really weird nowadays and the quality control in general, the quality of the tubes is not that good, really depending on the brand, really depending on the model of a tube. And I just can't tell you what to buy. But what I can tell you is that I always buy a match set of tubes. Why? Because a match set of tubes always goes through another like layer of QC. And for me, it is really good to get as much quality control layers as I can before the tubes come to me because I don't buy a thousand tubes. I just buy certain sets to replace them in amplifiers. And I'm just sort of raising the chance that the tubes that I get are going to be fine and good and will last long, even though nobody can really guarantee this. So most definitely I would advise getting a match set of tubes from a respected company where you can at least trust that they did their key you see, so they are the ones getting the bad tubes and removing them from the batch. Now, one more thing that is quite interesting that people ask me about, and it's the AliExpress tubes. People who buy stuff from AliExpress, they found out there are tubes over there. Well, I'll tell you this. I had some experience with these tubes. It's quite weird, but they just worked completely fine. The fact is that these tubes are basically manufactured in the same company. The only difference is that the tubes on AliExpress are from a very weird batch that doesn't go through like different layers of quality control. Therefore, there is always a chance when you buy such a thing that you don't know really what you're getting. Realistically, I avoid buying that stuff because I prefer paying a little bit more to these companies so they do a little bit of quality control and if some tubes are messed up, it's on their account and what I get is something that there is a high chance that it's actually going to work. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank everybody for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one very, very soon. Bye.